हेलो एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट प्रोसेस शेड्यूलिंग द लर्निंग आउटकम ऑफ दिस सेशन आर स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू डिमॉन्स्ट्रेट हाउ प्रोसेस शेड्यूलिंग टेक्स प्लेस लिस्ट एंड एक्सप्लेन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ शेड्यूलर डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन टाइप्स ऑफ शेड्यूलर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ मल्टी प्रोग्रामिंग इज टू मैक्सिमाइज द सी पी यू यूटिलाइजेशन फॉर दिस पर्पज नंबर ऑफ प्रोसेसेस मस्ट बी प्रेजेंट इन द सिस्टम वेन एवर न्यू प्रोसेस एंटर्स इन टू द सिस्टम दैट प्रोसेस इज एडेड इन टू द जॉब क्यू जॉब क्यू कंटेंट्स ऑल प्रोसेसेस प्रेजेंट इन द सिस्टम द प्रोसेसेस विच आर रेडी फॉर एग्जीक्यूशन एंड प्रेजेंट इन मेमरी आर केप्ट इन रेडी क्यू रेडी क्यू इज रिप्रेजेंटेड एज अ लिंक लिस्ट विच कंटेंट्स टू पॉइंटर हेड एंड टेल हेड पॉइंट्स टू दी फर्स्ट पी सी बी एंड टेल पॉइंट्स टू दी लास्ट पी सी बी एंड ईच पी सी बी इन द सिस्टम पॉइंट्स टू इट्स नेक्स्ट पी सी बी एलॉन्ग विथ रेडी क्यू नंबर ऑफ डिवाइस क्यू आर प्रेजेंट इन द सिस्टम एज शोन हियर वी हैव मैग्नेटिक टेप डिवाइस क्यू फॉर टू यूनिट्स डिस्क क्यू फॉर वन यूनिट एंड टर्मिनल device queue for one unit so as shown here the processes can wait for a disk as shown here the ready queue contains two processes that is p7 and p2 while the process p3 p14 and p6 are waiting for the device disk common representation of process scheduling is queuing diagram In queuing diagram, each rectangular box represents queue. Circle represents the resource that serve the queue. Ellipse represents the processes. Arrow represents the flow of the process in the system. Whenever new process enters into the system, that process is added into the ready queue. Then scheduler selects the process for execution and give that process to the cpu during execution the process may wait for input output event then that process entered from ready state to waiting state and process can wait for io request queue this io request queue is a device queue once io completes process can again enter into the ready queue similarly if operating system is using round robin scheduling algorithm then process may be preempted from the cpu and it can be added into the ready queue when its time slice gets expire similarly during execution process may execute a fork system call and child process may be created so that process can wait till the execution of the child so after child execution the process can again re-enter into the ready queue similarly during execution interrupt may occur if interrupt occur then again process entered into the waiting state and it service the interrupt once interrupt finish process again entered into the ready queue all the processes which are preempted from cpu are entered into the ready queue then again scheduler selects the process from ready queue and process eventually terminates means it completes its execution now pause a video and think and write the answer for different types of queue used by the processes and also differentiate between ready queue and device queue let us see for the answer there are two types of queue present in the system ready queue and device queue processes uses ready queue along with io queue interrupt queue time slice expire queue and fork queue ready queue is the queue where processes are in ready state and waiting for cpu allocation whereas device queue are queues where processes are in waiting state and waiting for particular io event 
let us see scheduler process migrates between the various scheduling queue throughout its lifetime selection of these processes is done by appropriate scheduler there exist three types of scheduler first short term scheduler then long term scheduler and medium term scheduler short term scheduler short term scheduler is also called as a cpu scheduler it selects the processes from among the process that are ready to execute means the processes which are ready in ready queue this scheduler is fastest as it selects a new process for cpu frequently it has less control over degree of multi programming the degree of multi programming is termed as the number of process leaving the system is equal to the number of process entering to the system short term scheduler is minimal in time sharing operating system short term scheduler is cpu scheduler because it takes processes from ready queue and assign it to the cpu next type of scheduler is long term scheduler this scheduler is also called as a job scheduler this selects the processes from the job pool and loads them into the memory for execution as we already studied whenever new process enters into the system that process is entered into the job pool then the processes from the job pool are given into the ready queue that task is performed by long term scheduler the speed of long term scheduler is less than cpu scheduler it controls degree of multi programming we can say that the degree of multi programming is stable if number of processes departs from the system is equal to number of processes which arrives into the system so long term scheduler controls degree of multi programming means it it keep track of the number of processes leaving the cpu and then selecting the processes from the job pool and give that processes into the ready queue long term scheduler must select a good process mix that is io bound and cpu bound processes are categorized as io bound process and cpu bound process the processes which uses maximum time for io operation are called as io bound process and the processes which uses maximum time for computation are called as a cpu bound processes so if long term scheduler selects a processes of cpu bound then io queue may remain empty similarly if long term scheduler selects maximum io bound processes then ready queue may remain empty so this should not happen as the maximum cpu utilization is goal of current operating system so long term scheduler must select a good proper process mix of the processes it should select the combination of io bound and cpu bound processes long term scheduler is absent in time sharing operating system the next type of scheduler is medium term scheduler medium term scheduler is also called as a swapper it removes the processes from memory and stores them on swap device speed is in between both that is short term scheduler and long term scheduler medium term scheduler reduces degree of multi programming as it selects the processes which are executing in cpu and stores that processes back on swap device it reduces it automatically reduces the degree of multi programming it is part of time sharing operating system the operating system which supports time sharing feature uh, it uses medium term scheduler now this is what the schedulers and scheduling queue as we studied here the processes have different types of queue that is ready queue and different device queues okay so this is the role of the different scheduler which takes place between these different types of queue whenever new process enters into the 
system that process is given to the job pool then it is the task of long term scheduler to select the processes from job pool and enter it into the ready queue then the cpu scheduler which is also called as short term scheduler selects the processes from the ready queue and give that processes for the execution during execution that processes may be swapped on swap device by medium term scheduler the swapping of the processes is done based on different criteria when there is a space again in ready queue then that processes are again re-entered into the ready queue once that process re-enter into the ready queue again short term scheduler selects the processes for execution once process finish its execution that process terminates so this is all about different scheduling queue used by the processes and different types of schedulers how they play important role in scheduling different processes in the operating system these are the references thank you